me everyone can you hear me mm-hmm. yes sir okay that's good uh before we start two things many of you attended the session yesterday and also before that short break that we have had in the previous week uh, in the but as i still see that when you are joining what is happening you are being on hold on in the lobby and i had to accept or admit you i'm not sure why it is happening maybe one reason i'm thinking that you probably could have a request uh, to join this team or group join this group so if you do so what happens on my side you might know that same thing as well. like umesh and i can see he's still waiting at the in the lobby it should not be happening like this because if you requested and what i will do is that i would accept you as a group a uh, member of this power systems to team and then any time when we meet in the class or for some other meetings we we can just join without waiting in the lobby so if you did not do that please do that when you have time and uh, i will accept it on my side to make it easy for us uh, otherwise if you, if if you did not do that it will it will be is <laughs> still coming many of you i know that you attended and still doing this things so please do that thank you very much for that and the second thing is that i need a class representative for fourth year please can you give me names i want to do it uh in a, in a proper way but very quickly we want to get it done uh in 5 minutes now it's 10:32 i ask you to nominate names for the fourth year class rep can you do that please quickly class representative for fourth year can you please nominate i will give you 2 minutes for nomination it's 10:33 now 10:33 to 10:35 please write it on the chat uh, facility so please write it write the name that you want to nominate you can also put your microphone on to nominate someone you can also nominate yourself no problem Okay I got one name Jakari Naidu <coughs> Is there any other name please nominate you also can nominate yourself it's not a problem if you nominating yourself Remember that you can also nominate yourself please nominate yourself or your friends anyone you think uh, might be good to represent your class for various purposes luvo you want to say something luvo no 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 say it was a mistake i oh, i know it's fine much fine i thought you were nominating yourself do you want to nominate yourself and no i'm afraid so i can't be afraid what you want to be president and you are afraid to be a class representative what is happening no nah, no i i'm just afraid i don't know oh no it's okay okay i got another name sumendran mudliar uh is nominated as well sumendran mudliar Okay now it's 10:35 already I will wait for few seconds more to give and some some more opportunities to you to think and if you want to nominate yourself or other friends of yours Okay now we have two names 
One is Zakari Naidu and the other is Sumendran Mudia. Who you want? Can you do it via chat? Can you please type yes or no against the name? Or you can type the name if you want to do it directly. So, <clears throat> is there any objection with Zakari Naidu and Sumendran Mudrial? Just let's, let's make it clear. I guess you will respond it quickly, but if you don't say anything, then I will assume that there is no objection. That's the first one. And then I'll come to choose one with your response. So is there any objection? Okay, I don't hear anyone, so everyone is good. So Umeshan said no, so there is no objection, and others are quiet, which means uh, we are fine with both uh, Zakari and Shumendran. So now we go to choose one of them. Can you please write the name of the person that you think is the best among those two, Zakari Naidu and Sumendran Mudiyar? Uh, it's, it's a simple process. Uh, it's sometimes that you need help with for the class, for the module, anything in the teaching and learning, in your modules, you can go to the person, you can consider those kind of things. I'm just trying to help you. I'm not supposed to influence you. I'm not influencing, but I'm trying to say some words. That's what I did in my, in my uh, study period, in my uh, schools that I thought, okay, he can go and speak to the authorities on behalf of me. So please write the name quickly. Now we have two names. We have to sort it out quickly. Zakari, I got one name. <clears throat> am I, am I, is, is my accent of that name Zakari is correct? Can you confirm please? How do how do you say it? Can you can you put your microphone on and tell me if I am correct or how I can say that name? I'm just trying to learn. I'll give you one more minute to write the name of the class representative that you think you can nominate. Sorry, not nominate, select now from these two, Zakari and Sumendran Mudliya. So it's 10.39 now, within 10.40 you should be out of it. So, okay, it's time for me now. Let's close this thing. Thank you very much for helping to choose. I got the names, as you can also see on the chat. If you go to the chat uh, list, uh, people have responded and they are suggesting Zakari. We got also one response from Luvo uh, for Sumendra and supporting Sumendra. So, we got Zakari as the club representative. I will send it to the authorities for. They are noting and further communication in this purpose. Okay, thank you very much. So let's go to our thing now. Can you see the screen, the PowerPoint now?
uh, example of a four bus system yes sir. okay thank you very much so i discussed something it was very brief very general in in terms of the parameters that we consider how we configure bus we how we give them names of those buses so each and every bus is named bus one bus two bus three and up until bus and then we came to the ith bus k bus meaning the generalization of uh, the power flow study theories so we have always a power system it can be part of a bigger power system but when we consider the power flow study or load flow study of that part of the power system we must know how many buses are there and we name them from bus one to bus n now that n will be depending on the number of buses that we are considering from that power system so it might be five bus system six bus system or 10 bus system or 30 bus system then we consider the voltages uh, active and reactive power of all those buses but to remember and we'll come across that once again that we don't get to know each and everything from each bus or we don't focus but rather we focus on specific things from specific type of buses yesterday i showed you some uh, practical pictures of different types of buses that we use uh, in in different applications uh, from substation to our households to motor connection to generator connection and so on but today i'm giving another example of four bus system the reason why i'm giving this four four bus example is a step by step manner how we write the relationship between the current and the voltage using the admittance now when we consider that admittance if you remember yesterday we were talking about two different type of admittances one is in between i a bus and k the bus but i is not equal to k and the second one was uh, that uh, if there is interconnection between i bus and k bus meaning we came across two specific things when we looked at the y bus matrix meaning admittance bus matrix if we looked at the diagonal diagonal of the matrix these those are the self admittances meaning y11 y22 y33 y44 y55 until we reach the last bus ynn and they are self admittances y11 means all the admittances connected to bus number one y22 means all the admittances connected to bus number two it does not mean it, the bus number one is connected to bus number one itself because i cannot be is equal to k that's the first principle that we remember but y1 y11 y22 these are all capital i am talking about y and then we also found that off diagonal matrices are representing the it admittances between i -th bus and k -th bus those are the transfer admittances so y11 y22 these are these are self admittances y12 y15 or y153 all these are transfer admittances so we will come with this example of four bus system so that we learn how we do that derivation between the i and v and that includes y and finally we will know how y11 capital y11 capital y22 are determined how do we do it like manually hands-on calculation that kind of thing so i took this example of four bus system each buses are numbered bus one bus two bus three and bus four and the next thing we do ah, this and the next thing we do is we level the voltages for each buses for voltage one v1 v2 v3 v4 these levelings are very important because we starting with the power system block diagram of that power system uh, that we four bus five bus or three bus doesn't matter and from there we will draw another equivalent circuit and from the equivalent circuit we will write the catch of current law and from the catch of current law equations we will derive the relationship between the current and voltage that includes the admittance and from that admittance we will manipulate a little bit so that we can see clearly what is happening with the 
current and voltage in terms of the y bus matrix so that's why the levelings are very important here actually uh, sorry uh, so we show the generation SG1 complex power from generator 1, SG2 complex power from generator 2. Also, there are some loads SD1 complex power for demand 1, complex power for demand 2 on bus 2. Similarly, SD3 is there and SG3 generation, some sort of load, some generation, some load. But in real life, we don't get it like this. For this bus, I kept it like this so that we understand the fundamentals of it. Sometimes we will find in our real life application that there is no load, but there is some transmission line going out. There is no generator, but some demand is there, meaning the load is there. In some cases, both load and transmission line are there. And transmission lines are shown as transmission line, but at the end of the transmission line, definitely there are some loads. We know that, but we don't show it on the diagram. You should remember, if I'm showing a transmission line here, it means at the end of the transmission line, there will be some SD, and that D will be numbered somehow, maybe SD3. And if there is no transmission line, meaning the load or the demand is localized to this bus. It's far from the transmission line. The transmission line is not here but if we add a transmission line we will consider that that load is far from this bus v3 the effect of the power flow study that we are doing for that transmission line is not going to affect much it will affect but not much not significantly so when you do load flow study for example i can give you we are doing a load flow study and the voltage stability in fact and to be specific actually we're studying voltage instability in the province of kzn it's a real study that we are doing at the moment for uh, the PhD student uh, who is under my supervision, uh, who, is, who, who is working at ESCOM. So we're studying voltage instability in KZN. But KZN doesn't have generation. We don't see generators, generating stations here in Darban or nearby areas. There is that nearby power station which is situ situated at the Drakensberg, which is palm storage power plant. That's the nearest generation. Now, if we look at all those buses that we have here, it, hundreds of buses, but there is no generation. The nearest bus is far from here, which is pump storage power plant, and that doesn't run every every 24-7 time. It runs only when there is peak demand, and the other power generating stations are incapable of meeting the power demand. Then we run the pump storage power plant at Tekken's spot. So what we do, we need to know where we are focusing. So that's how we will draw our power flow diagram. In this case, we drew it. But if you are focusing on a real life, then you will have to consider that power system or the part of the power system that you are focusing on. You can focus all the, on the whole national grid of South Africa. Then that will include ESCOM and other power generating stations that belong to other utility companies. ESCOM is uh, having uh, most of the power generation 90 to 95% still. 5% or 10% belong to other utilities. How they have configured their power stations and power transmission lines and loads will be interconnected into the power system that belongs to ESCOM. So you need to now focus on each and every aspect where you want to focus. That's a real life scenario. Now, when we have that diagram, from that diagram, we draw something called equivalent circuit diagram. This is just a diagram that we draw like to represent the system so that we understand what is happening, where the generations are there, where the loads are there, where there is interconnection between the buses. So from there, what we do, we first check how many buses are there. There are four buses. So each of those bus will be represented in this equivalent circuit diagram by a node, N-O-D-E, node. But on top of that, there will always be an additional node, which is a common one, which is going to be present all the time, which is the ground node. And that ground node is represented by zero. It's not O. That ground node is always common. It's common. You can see the thick uh, horizontal line is the ground node, common to every generating station because they have the neutral uh, connected to ground and that forms a node which is common. So that's zero. And then corresponding to each bus, we put all the nodes, one, two, three, and four. These are the four nodes representing those 
four buses. After that, we show the generations like SG1. So SG1 is represented here as S1. So SG1 generator is connected to bus one, meaning node one and ground. So we come to this SG2 is represented here. S2 connected to bus two, meaning node two, and then the common ground node. Then similarly, you can do these things for S3 and S4 representing generator three and generator four connected to the node three and node four respectively when we are done then that's these are these are these are done in a step by step manner just don't start anyway if you want to draw this uh, diagram from this type of uh, power system simple general representation do it in a step by step manner put the nodes then connect the nodes to the respective generation facility and then common ground Complete all the generation facilities when done with that, then you show the admittances. Now, each and every node that has generation facility will have some connection to ground because of capacitance formed between that bus and the ground. So those node one is, y is connected to the common ground to zero. So Y one zero. Similarly, two will be having the same thing y20 3 will also have the y30 because of the capacitance between the bus and the ground y40 also is there so it's again a step by step manner when we are done with that then we go see what are the interconnections in between the buses so between bus 1 and 2 you can see that there is an interconnection we put an admittance between bus 1 and 2 which is small y1 and 2 small y12 but we again must remember these are small y's, lowercase y. We will arrive at the capital Y from this lowercase y. That is why they are different. Capital Y will include some of them. My, might include all of them, might include some of them. There might be nothing. It might be completely zero. But we need to understand that lowercase y is different from the capital Y. So you show the admittance between bus 1 and 2 similarly bus 1 and 3 has an interconnection so bus 1 and 3 interconnection is shown as a admittance 1 3 y 1 3 and now if we go to bus there is no more interconnection here you must make sure that you complete it in a step by step manner and check if you have considered everything there is no more inter is there 1 3 is there we have done that in this equivalent circuit now we go to bus 2 bus 2 has interconnection between bus 2 and 1 which we have already done it then we go to bus 4 we can see there is a interconnection so bus y24 you can write 42 as well or 24 doesn't matter they will be same but the sign might differ from each other corresponding to which one you are referring to like i don't know how to make it easy now but i can take an example uh let's say if you follow soccer right do you follow soccer yes many sir. of you yes, follow sir. soccer okay yes, now sir. let's say which which teams you follow which is which team you are supporting chelsea and the Barcelona. Chelsea. Huh? chelsea and Barcelona and Orlando pirates Orlando Pirates, yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. I don't want to go far. I don't have that money to fly and go to Chelsea. Yeah? So Orlando Pirates. So let's say Orlando Pirates is playing against a team. Give me the name of the team. Kaiser Chiefs. Kaiser Chiefs. So Orlando Pirates. So, so when you watch TV, they show or they... Can I say, are you saying Orlando Pirates is playing Kaiser Chiefs. Now, can I say that Kaiser Chiefs playing Orlando Pirates? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. yes so sir. which, but both are correct, but which one is most appropriate? How do we know whether Orlando Pirates is playing Kaiser Chiefs or Kaiser Chiefs is playing Orlando Pirates? I think it's the home ground. We yes, come you are 100% correct. That's the one that we refer to. Similarly, it, when we come to this Y24 or Y42, which one I'm focusing on? You understand? So we can say Y24, Y42, 
but it will depend on which one we are actually referring at the moment. The same thing which we are doing when you are considering whether who is hosting who is coming as a guest team. Right? So we will consider that part. So what we do here, we come to this node 2, we checked with 2, 4 connection, then what else is there? 2, 3 connection is there. So we show an admittance y23 between the nodes 2 and 3. So we complete all these nodes up until we reach the bus number 4. So when all these things are done, we use this equivalent circuit diagram to write the Kirchhoff's current law equation and it's simple. And the reason why I'm showing these things is very important to understand because you need to also develop a skill to start with drawing this diagram and then making the equivalent circuit, showing each and every aspect, meaning the nodes, meaning the admittances. And from there, you will be able to write your Kirchhoff's current law equation. Now, when we write Kirchhoff's current law equation, there will be four currents. And each of those currents will come from each of those nodes. Actually, those nodes are being represented by those uh, passes that we considered in the first place. So we will have four currents because we have four buses or four nodes. So first one we will consider, which is the number one. So we will have four buses, bus one, bus two, bus three, bus four. So we will have current for each bus. We will call them I1, we will call them I2, we will call them I3, we will call them I4. So we will write the equation for the first one as the I1. Second one is I2, I3, I4. So how do we write the equation? It's very simple. We look at the nodes and how they are connected with the admittances. What are the admittances connected with that node? Because now we are with this reduced equivalent circuit diagram where the nodes are represented by those uh, voltage buses. So I1 is equal to, it's easy to write, current is admittance times voltage. Current is B by Z. Z, if you take the reciprocal, you get admittance that you already know. So we take the admittance and the corresponding voltage. So if we look at these admittance, what are the admittances here for node one? Y10 is there, Y12 is there, Y13 is there. So these are the admittances in this equivalent circuit. Y10, Y13, and Y12. These are the three admittances that you look at first. Just check the circuit diagram. That's why the circuit diagram is important. If we made some mistake in the first place, then it would be wrong to write this equation for the current for bus one, which is I1. So we look at these three admittances, so I10. So I10, and then we look at what is the voltage associated with this Y10. It's connected to node one. So it's only the voltage difference between node one and the ground voltage difference between the node one and the ground is being connected between one and zero. So it's V1, Y10 times V1. It's simple admittance times the voltage difference. The voltage difference of node one is V1 minus zero because ground is situated at a zero voltage. So we come to the next one, which is one, two. So Y12 is in between the node one and node two. What is the voltage of Node 1 is V1, and then what is the voltage of V2? Is, uh, sorry, Node 2 is V2. I'm not writing V2 minus V1, because if you remember, that's what we discussed, whether which team is, we need to know which team is hosting. So we'll say Kajja Chips is playing, all under parents meaning Kajja Chips is the home team. Similarly, we are considering I1 here, that's why we need to write V1 minus V2, not V2 minus V1. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. And then we come to the last admittance, which is Y13. Y13 is in between node 1 and node 3, so that's why we write it as V1 minus V3 because we're focusing the node 1 and node 1 is giving us the current 
i1. So we considered all the admittances y10, y12, and y13, and looked at the voltage differences between those nodes between which the admittance is connected. And an admittance is always connected between two nodes. Always. If you look at this admittance, y10, y12, y13, they are always connected in between in between two nodes, one zero, the first one, the second one is Y12, the third one is Y13. It is also telling us, it's very important to for you to understand and capture all this information from the system. If you just look at the admittance, how it is named Y10, it will tell you immediately that it is connected between two buses or two nodes, one and zero. If you talking about Y51, I know that you are talking about the admittance between bus 5 and bus 1. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. So we can go to the second node because we have already written the equation for the first one, the current for the bus 1, which is I1. So we can now go to I2 for the bus to the current and again we look at what are the admittances here we see two zero is there two one is there and two four is there two three is also there so when we write equation you see y two zero now is in between v bus two or node two and the ground node so the difference is v two so we come to the next one, Y21. You could write one, two. It's not going to change anything. But for the voltage, you must always remember now, it's not going to be V1 minus V2. It has to be V2 minus V1. Okay, I need to take a short break. You can think of some questions. I'll come back to you. Small break, five minutes. Thank you. I, my computer was disturbing, uh, my hard disk was not detected, I lost a lot of information, someone was helping me, he came back to return the computer. Thank you very much for understanding that. And now we coming to this equation Y21, you could write Y12 as well. It's the same thing because it's the magnitude here at the moment the value of the admittance. But for the voltage, as we are focusing on the node 2, we're writing the equation for I2, it has to be now V2 minus V1. It cannot be V1 minus V2. It was V1 minus V2 when we are writing the equation of I1. So it's V2 minus V1. We have another admittance Y2, 3. In between node 2 and 3, we write the equation V2 minus V3. We have another admittance Y24, V2 minus V4. So the reference is important, like the home ground that we talked about. Similarly, we can write the I3 and I4, I6, I7, and all those. I think you can do that. Right. Uh, I see that uh, Zakari has mentioned something on Power Systems to group chat. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for that. I think you are a true leader. I hope that everyone will be getting help uh, in whatever problem or issues or assistance they might need. Thank you very much. And everyone should communicate to him for anything you might need. And just Zakari, you can also can let me know uh, if the class is having any problem or any issue. We'll try to help everyone in every respect. So when we have completed all this equation, we have I1, we have I2, we have I3, we have I4, which is the last bus minute. We reached the nth bus. Now we can take all these equations and put it in matrix form. We can do that easily and you know how to do that. And if you put them in matrix form, then you will find that they come like this. If you simplify it, I reduced some steps in this one. You can do it yourself. So when we do that, we'll find that we'll have this kind of thing. So that's what I was trying to explain the other time that capital Y11 will have some of them, none of them, all of them. We don't know. It will depend on the configuration of the power system, how the interconnection actually is there. So we see that after manipulation and rearranging all those equations, 
when you put them in the matrix form we find that these are the elements of the matrix that we got because it's a four bus system so we'll have a four by four matrix four by four matrix and we get that for this part element one one element one one we get it has y one zero y one two it has y one three as well all of them are added for element one two what we get is negative of y one two y one two is a magnitude just a value but it's coming with the negative sign if you do if you you should actually do this uh, intermediate steps you can start from after this you can start after this breaking all these things down and writing them in terms of v1 v2 separating them then you will arrive at this so we get this negative here we also get negative here we get nothing here zero so we see that it's coming in a different format so what we do in the next step we say this one is y11 this one is y12 capital now i'm talking about this one is capital y12 capital y13 capital y14 that's how the first row is written we come to the second row it will be y21 like we do in matrix it's follow it's following the same principle so we y21 2 2 2 3 2 4 3 1 3 2 and until we reach the last pass which is the pass number four here so we get that admins now you can see how y11 is made up capital y11 is showing that it is equal to the summation of the admittances y10 y12 y13 now how we can verify that and make it easy for us to understand we are saying capital y11 like i mentioned sometime uh, that capital y1 means one capital y11 means that all the admittances connected to bus one so if we look at this bus one or node one here what are the admittances connected to node one so we can clearly see it's y10 y12 y13 so we just add them we are done then we come to y12 y12 is what negative of y12 lower case what is y13 is the negative of y13 which is this one what is y14 there is no interconnection between node 1 and node 4 that's why it is equal to 0 similar things can be followed for all other elements in this shorter for, uh, version or the full version of the admittances so we will do some manual tutorial and we will form these things looking at the diagram and then go for the next step of the power flow study for the power flow study first thing we have to do these steps having the power system getting the deduced diagram getting the bus admittance matrix for the tutorial that you are doing you have those uh, the values they are giving the impedance values for the lines and so on meaning you know or you are given but you if you are doing it on your own you need to know those values as well so that's how we form the matrix for the bus now if you want to do it in terms of uh, the these are just some explanations here you can check it later on as well now we want to if we want to go for the impedance instead of admittance we can do that as well if we just take the inverse of the admittance so you know how to get admittance uh, sorry how to get the inverse of a matrix you're finding those adjoints and, and things like that that you learned in first year i guess so we will use them now before i go to the next slide which is on the power flow equations considering the powers the active and reactive power can i stop and uh, if you have any question i can take those
If you have any question, you can ask. Is there any question? Okay, you have understood it. Thank you very much. So let's go to the power flow problem. Now, in the power flow problem, I initially tried to describe or explain that in power flow problem, we cannot do the power flow study direct using direct calculation because those direct calculations that we are doing in previous modules where we are considering the source as a voltage source, meaning we knew the voltage magnitude and the phase angle. On the load side, we were given the R, L and C values. So they, they were actually impedances. So power source is represented by the voltage source and then the load is represented by impedances. And from there, we could calculate the current and power and we know how where the current is flowing and how much current is flowing, in which direction is flowing. And from there, we also can know the power flow as well. But in load flow studies, we cannot do that type of direct calculation because the generators, the power sources are not considered as voltage sources. They are acting as power sources, meaning they are supplying power, active power and reactive power. On the load side, it's the same thing. Loads are no longer the impedances R, L and C. Although they fundamentally has R, L, C, they have uh, R, L and C in them. They are also consuming power, active power and reactive power that is being supplied by all the generators. So in this equation, so sorry, in this load flow problem, what we do, we consider the complex power and complex power is S for IF bus, it will be PI plus JQI and I will always be varying from 1 up until N. For each and every bus, we can represent that complex power SI is equal to PI plus JQI. If only we want to go for bus number 1, so it will be S1 is equal to P1 plus JQ1. When you want to go to bus number 9, so it will be S9 is equal to P9 plus JQ9 and so on. And as you can see, what is written next to this PI plus JQI is VI conjugate. That's how we calculate the total power. We take the conjugate of the current. That's the conventional way. But sometimes we also con can take the conjugate of the other, not the current, meaning the voltage in this case. So what happens when we take the conjugate of current and multiply it with the voltage? What happens when we take the conjugate of voltage and multiply it with current? So I want you to give me an example of a complex power anything that you can choose can you please type it not in terms of p plus gq but specifically mention some number i give you an example two plus j1 i'm giving you an example of two plus j1 but you can write you can choose one just type one example of complex power that you think is being supplied by the bus whatever bus i so let's say bus is given bus number is given so it's bus 3 so it will be p3 is equal to give me a number for p and q quickly it doesn't take type on the chat facility five and ten so five is p and q is ten this is an unstable system if you take more reactive power from a system the system will become unstable the voltages will collapse the reactive power is too much here 10 plus 5j 10 plus 5j now how do you know that it's, it's something that is acceptable 10 plus 5j is better as compared to 5 plus 10j 
how do we know that it's it's an acceptable or it's a good value that is being suggested can you calculate the power factor from this 10 p is equal to 10 and q is equal to 5 can you please calculate the power factor each of you should do that calculation and let me know the power factor on the meeting chat quickly use your calculator and tell me the power factor of this suggested p and q for both 5 plus 10 and 10 plus 5 the power factor Point eight nine is for omissions. Is it is it for your one? I guess it's for ten plus five J. And if it was five plus ten J, if it was for five plus ten J. Would the value be same if P was 5 and Q was 10? 0.44. Has everyone done this calculation? Has everyone done this calculation? Can you see what is happening if that those two values are correct? Can you see if those values make sense for the power factor 0 0.89 and 0 0.44 which one you think is you can accept yes 0 0.89 10 plus 5j so what happens when you go for interview they will ask you Give me some example of P and Q. Then you say, okay, 5 plus 10 J, or you can say five, 10 plus 5 J, or 5 plus 10 J. So you think about it. So if the power factor is 0.44, it's clear that its power factor is so poor. Yeah, it can happen in real life once or twice by mistake. But we need to do some power factor correction, meaning for that system, there are a lot of things that you always, uh, I always used to say that there is no end. Even if you have made a mistake, saying 5 plus 10 J, it can be possible in some system, it's there. I know in, in some industry here, uh, they, they have melting furnaces. They draw a huge amount of reactive power. It can be a situation like 5 plus 10 J. But what you now know, need to know, is how can you correct that? The answer is you put some capacitor banks to put some reactive power supply and then the power factor will be improved to some value close to 0 0.85, 0 0.89 or 0 0.92, something like that. So now if we come back to our calculation, if we come back to our calculation now, if we saying this is voltage, uh, sorry, we said this is power, eh? 10 plus 5J. And if we want to write the equations for voltage of a bus, how do we write the voltage of a bus in complex form? Voltage is also a complex quantity. The current is a complex quantity. All we are doing here is complex, so even the impedance is complex quantity, as you know already. Because R and L, if you put them together to form impedance, it will be some value plus J something. Is that what you remember still from the previous module? So, so let's say I have two ohm of resistance from the pure resistance and I have three ohm of inductance from the pure inductance. So two plus J3. If I have the opposite three ohm from resistance, three plus J2, two ohm from inductance. So that's also complex. Impedance is also complex. 
So all we are going to deal now with is complex number. So give me a voltage as a complex number because we have VI conjugate. So we need to know what is V in complex form. Before we can proceed, just give me quickly. It doesn't take long. Consider a voltage level, let's say 230, 240, or 11 kV, 33 kV, whatever. That's the voltage of buses. Always think about something real that exists in real life. Don't just, just don't say 100 plus J0. 100 volt is not that normal, not that standard. We don't find 100 volt. In, in in our real life much as compared to we get 230 volt or 400 volt or 11 kb or 6.6 kb in real life so in some examples are being asked always focus if it's really really available in our real life so give me a an expression of voltage in complex form quickly Write it down. How many of you are attending this session? Many of you. Type it, please. The voltage equation. Let me help you. No, no. Okay. 20 to 30 cos 30. It does not necessarily have to be cos 30 sin 30. You can represent it in a very simple way. When we have voltage, we always need to know that we choose a voltage bar as the reference, right? If you remember on the phaso diagram, we always take the voltage as the reference. So when we draw phaso diagrams, then currents will be either leading or lagging. Do you remember that? We always take the voltage as the reference phasor in our phasor diagrams. So follow that principle when you are forming the voltage expression in a complex form. So it should be, in my opinion, if you're considering 230 volt, so it's 230 t plus j zero so it should be the voltage should be let's say v1 i'm writing for bus number one so uh, i'm typing it on the chat screen so you can see it voltage is represented as 230 plus j zero in complex form right but that's the reference one. But if you have some other angle than zero, then it will have some number there instead of zero. So if we take that emissions one now, what will be the the the, the form like this? Not cost 30. So we can calculate and give me in this form quickly. Cos 30 is how much? Hmm? 0.866. Can you calculate that? Multiply it by with. 230 and get the value in J form, complete value instead of cos 30, J, uh, sin cos sin. I don't want the numbers, not sin, sin cos anymore. Can you do that quickly? Yes, so 199 plus J 115. So that's the voltage. So V1, I'm writing it now, taking your value. I'm just making it simple. Let's say 200 plus J115. Simplify. That's the voltage expression. And let us consider the current expression. So what is the current expression? You can just imagine. 
which has numbers for the real part and the imaginary part. Just give me a number that I can type here or you can type as well quickly. That for current is so impedance is unity. Don't take the same thing. Okay, you type the voltage, I guess, omission. But give me the expression of a current in it, something different from 200 uh, plus J115, something different. Let's say I have 100. I'm just typing any arbitrary value for the current J50. So that's the current. So we have now the voltage 200 plus J115, the current for the bus one, both of them are for the bus one, V1 and I1, 100 plus J50. Now you calculate P1 and tell me using, using VI conjugate V1, I1 conjugate and tell me what is the value that you are getting. V1, I1 conjugate. Can you calculate and tell me quickly? The I conjugate, meaning you conjugate the I, you conjugate the I and multiply it with V, then you get this value 2750, it's a little bit different from Wishan's one with the Luthos 25668 and 25750, why is it so different? 1541 while Luto has 1500. Okay, maybe Umeshan considered the 199. Ah, yes, that's what I was thinking. You used 199.18. So keep that value, it's okay, no problem. But we can also calculate P1 as VI conjugate times. I1. Instead of taking conjugate of I, we can also take conjugate of the voltage V1. Now you calculate what is P1 now. What is P1 now? If we take the conjugate of the voltage instead of taking conjugate of the current, which is the conventional one, conventionally we use conventionally we use current conjugate. So what is going to happen now? If we take the conjugate of voltage and find out P1, Luto check it. Yeah, you did the right thing. Anyone else? Everyone should do this. These are the fundamentals. You will always need them in industry. Always people will ask you when you are in interview board or, or discussing something during the work. So what we see now, what is the observation? What is the observation from these two calculations when we can use conjugate of current? What when we use conjugate of voltage? when we are trying to find out the complex power. This 25750 is the P and 1500 is the Q. 
So what we are observing from these two calculations, the small calculations, what are we observing? Tell me, there are quite a few things that we are observing here. Number one, right? Tell me the number one. You can put your microphone on as well. What you observe, the first thing. It's the conjugate of the other one. Huh? The yes, it's the conjugate of the other one. And if you if you dig a little deeper, simple way, try to explain it in a simple simple manner. Then P and V, v uh, sorry, P and Q value did not change. Right? P and Q value did not change. They remain the same. Is that okay? Now what happened? Else we find that the sign of Q value the sign of, we'll come to that Umeshan's comment. Thank you for, for that comment. We'll come to the, to check the sign of P and Q. First, we check the magnitude. They remain the same. Second, we look at the sign because that tells us the direction of power flow, both active and reactive power. So P sign doesn't change it remains the same meaning power flow direction remains the active power flow direction remains the same we don't know from which direction to which direction now but we know that it did not change so the power flow direction active power flow direction remains the same but for reactive power what happened the sign changed now it's negative when we used voltage conjugate instead of current conjugate when we used current conjugate the power reactive power flow sign was positive, now it is negative. So what does this mean now? How do we know the, what type of reactive power is there as a whole? As a whole means we are considering the whole reactive power of 1500 VAR in this case because we are considering voltage and current. Reactive power unit is VAR, volt active, uh, volt ampere reactive. So how do we know this 1500 VAR is inductive or capacitive? Because one could, uh, Umeshan could use B I conjugate, Lubo could use V conjugate I. How do we know that both of them did the right thing and both of them understood what type of reactive power that 1500 VAR is? Can you tell me? What type of reactive power is this 1500 unit? Inductive or capacitive? Mission is saying reactive power flowing from generator to load for the first one, meaning when we have 25750 plus J1500. Reactive power is flowing from generator to load. That's true, power is flowing, but I want to know is it capacitive, meaning is it supplying or drawing? And when we think of supplying or drawing, we come to the two fundamental things, capacitive and inductive. Capacitive will always be supplying. They will not consume or receive. But when it's inductive reactive power, it will receive instead of supplying. So what type of, that's what I want to know. Is it capacitive 
or inductive? So which one I'm asking the first one? Both, both. I want to come to the because this is you, you two of you come to me with two different answers. One is with positive sign, one is with negative sign. But I want to know what you understand. Is one five zero zero positive capacitive reactive power or inductive reactive power? Pluto is saying inductive reactive power, meaning it's absorbing reactive power. Inductive, they will absorb. If I have an inductance, that inductance is going to absorb reactive power or consume reactive power. If I have a capacitor bank, it will deliver reactive power or supply reactive power. It will not consume if it is a pure capacitance in it. That's what I'm trying to understand from both the answer, not only one. I, I know that you know that both the answers are correct. We can take VI conjugate, we also can take V conjugate I. No problem with that at all. But the conclusion should be the same when we want to know if it is inductive reactive power or capacitive reactive power. How do we know that? Now, I try to remember it in a simple manner, uh, so, sorry, simple manner, not memorizing anything. You cannot memorize all. You need to just apply some tricks. How do you do that? If you used current conjugate, then the words, look at the words. If you used current conjugate, look at the var sign. If it is positive, it is capacitive var. Do you remember current, conjugate, capacitive? Three things, C, C, C. If you remember this way, it will make it easy. If you used current, conjugate, so current, conjugate, C, C. And then you look at the sign. If it is positive, then it's capacitive bar. Again, that capacitive has a C at the beginning of that word, capacitive. So if, if you used current, conjugate, and if you find the sign is positive, meaning it's capacitive. And when it is capacitive, it is delivering, that is supplying. That is why Umeshan has written that reactive power is flowing from generator, going away to the loads because the generator is delivering. It's not consuming, the generator is not consuming. So Luto's answer is not the right one because if it is inductive, then it will draw, the generator will draw reactive power, which we don't want. That we want our generators to supply active power as well as reactive power to the load because they need them. The loads that we use in our real lives, they has R, they has they have they have R resistance, they have L in them, they also have C in some cases. So they will need that reactive power. So the generators need to supply. So in this case. We find that when we used current conjugate, we found that the sign of the reactive power was positive. So it's capacitive bar. But if we look at the other answer, 25, uh, sorry, yes, 25750 minus 1, uh, J1500. That was obtained using voltage conjugate, not the current conjugate. So if we used voltage conjugate, and if we find the sign is negative, meaning is still the capacitive part because we did not use current conjugate in the first place. Is it clear now? Do you, will you remember? It, just remember the first one. Current, if you used current conjugate and if you find the sign is positive, then it's capacitive part. Then the next one you can try to interpret any way you would remember or understand it easily. Is that clear now? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, thank you. So we're going to our back to our equations on the slide. Now, in our case, we saw that when we come to the equation of admittance, uh, it was a bit 
complicated like this because it's related to this current equation. So if we want to take the conjugate of this one, I1, because we need I, I1 conjugate, I2 conjugate, I3 conjugate, all those, and multiply it with the V, respective V. So V1, I1 conjugate. So it, it will be very complicated to take the conjugate of this one. It's, it will not with the example that we just practiced. It was easy. So in our case, we, it's difficult to get the conjugate of the current in the first place. That's why why we that's why we use the conjugate of the voltage because voltage is reference. It's easy. It's, it will be 230 plus J0 or 230 plus something. Like uh, we said 230 plus 100 or whatever. That is much easier to get uh, um, the, the conjugate value as compared to the current conjugate. Current equation is related like this. So it's difficult to take the conjugate of current. So that's why we are considering to take the conjugate of the voltage and when we take that conjugate we must remember that we must change the sign of q so initially when we write the equation of s we always write p plus jq so that was like that p plus jq but when we're taking the voltage conjugate instead of current conjugate we must remember that we have to change the sign here of the q and that's what we did so we have the equation of the complex power in terms of p and q which we get using the voltage conjugate and multiplied by the current. So we get to the next one. So, <coughs> sorry. So if we separate those P and Q, we'll get something like this. It's complicated now. I, I stopped, uh, I did not write some intermediate steps here, but I arrived at the final values of Q, P and Q the real part and the imaginary part of this equation. If we break down this equation, this summation equation, if you break down and multiply them, then you will arrive at this type of equation with the real part, which is the active power, imaginary part, which is the reactive part, right? When we have them, we go to consider, like I was mentioning, everything, every parameter, voltage, current, power, impedance, all of them are complex quantity here. So complex quantity means they have the magnitude and angle. So the voltage for each bus is represented as VI. I will change from one to N, or vary from one to N. So VI is represented with the magnitude of VI and the angle, which is delta I. So again, delta one, delta two, delta three, delta four, delta five, until we reach delta N. Similarly, for the kth bus voltage, we can say VK and the angle will be delta k. So again, that k will change from 1 to n or the particular bus that you are considering. Admittance is a complex quantity. It has magnitude y1, uh, y i k and it has the angle of theta k. So if we put all those values and then we'll see those real and imaginary quantities will be now looking like this. The magnitudes are multiplied and we'll get finally an angle here in terms of cos and sine for the reactive power. A cos will be related to the active part, sine will be related to the reactive part. That's what we know from our fundamentals of these phasors. So P and Q, we have I at bus representation for the active power and reactive power. Now these equations are called power flow equation. These are the fundamental equations because that's what we want to know in power flow study. We want to know how much active power is flowing in the ith bus or through the ith bus, how much reactive power flow is flowing with the, sorry, reactive power flow is flowing with the reactive, uh, sorry, with the ith bus. So P and these are called power flow equations because they represent the real power and imaginary powers. Right, And if we have n number of buses, so what will happen? We'll have n number of P equations, n number of Q equations. Is that clear? So if we have four buses that we are considering, so we'll have P1, P2, P3, 
P4. So four P equations, four number of P equation, power, active power flow equation. We will also have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So four number of reactive power equations. Is that clear? That we will have four P equations, P1, P2, P3, P4, and four Q equations. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 equations. Is that clear now? No matter how yes, complex yes. those equations are, but we can write yes, them. Yes. Okay, now if we consider that we combine the total number, active power and reactive power, so we will have eight equations, meaning that eight is coming from two times n, n is equal to four, n is the number of buses present in the system. So if we generalize it, we will say, if we have a system where there are n number of buses, we will have total 2n number of power flow equations giving us active power and reactive power expressions. If we have a power system in which there are n number of buses, we will have two times n number of power flow equations half of them will go from go to active power half of them will go to reactive power is that clear now yes sir okay that's good now we have two n number of equations and n number of buses and if we know four equations are there for P and four equations are there for Q. So if we know how to solve them for those equations, we need to know that we need as many number of equations. So for example, we learned it in our schools. When I have a, a, an equation, a, 2x is equal to 50. 2x is equal to 50. So we can calculate the value of x from this one equation, single equation that we are given. 2x is equal to 50. And we could calculate it easily. We could find out the value of x will be 25. And it's possible, it's simple. For we know that it's one variable we are solving for, only x. So for that, we need only one equation. We don't need more than one equation. It will make it complicated now. If we have another equation saying x, they don't relate to each other. So the number of equations that we need depends on how many variables we are solving. Now, if we say 2x plus y is equal to 50, you can't solve for either x or y at all. Because if I have given you only one equation, 2x plus y is equal to 50. You, can, you can't determine what is the value of x, what is the value of y, because you have only given one equation. But if I give you another equation, at least if I say now x plus y is 20, then now it's easy for you to find out what will be the value of x and what will be the value of y. Is that clear? So in this case, it applies here as well. So we have number of equations, we have number of variables we need to determine from this power flow study. So that's what we apply. So there will be some buses that we are coming now. So when we said we have a power system, we have n buses in each. And each of those buses will have some parameters known to us some parameters unknown to us. We will determine those unknown parameters of those respective buses. And considering those number of equations, twin number of power flow equations. So we have four parameters that we consider here. The first one we talked about that voltage magnitude. The second one is the uh, angle of the voltage, active power and active power. So if we have n number of buses, we have four n variables. 
So for foreign variables at n bus system, two n number of equations. If we know two variables for each bus, and two n variables are defined because if we know them, if we have specified them, if we sometimes we don't know, we assume to start the solution and finally we will arrive at the final value. So we sometimes specify the two variables and sometimes we are already given with those two variables. So we will have two n variables specified and two n variables unknown and we have two n equations so we can solve this. Is that clear now? Yes, sir. Okay, that's the fundamental whether we are doing it manually using our pen and paper or whether we are doing the power flow study using a computer software algorithm. Does not matter. This remains, this is the very fundamental that we have 2n power equations, 2n power equations we get from n active power equation, n reactive power equations and they are having the variables in them and each bus of the power system will have four of these quantities that we consider the magnitude of the voltage, angle of the voltage, active power and reactive power and each bus will have two of those four variables specified or known to us or assumed by us and two parameters or variables are unknown to us. We want to determine them. After completion of the power flow studies, we will know all those variables for all the buses. That's what we do. Do you need a break? I did not ask. I'm so sorry. Hey, yes, sir. We are tired. Yeah, you're tired. I can imagine. Now, let's take a break. Uh, it's now 11.53. I can give you a break, uh, like seven minutes. It's okay. I can, uh, at 10 past 12, we finish. So I will have 10 minutes. It's okay. No problem. I'll, I'll talk for 10 minutes. So you can take a short break uh, for for giving you a little bit re relaxation. I'll, I'll come back. Uh, I'm not closing this team's meeting. Uh, but I'll come back at 12.00. Please be there. Thank you very much. But don't forget to ask question. Uh, if you can think of some question during this break, please take, uh, prepare those questions so you can ask when you back. Thank you. Is everyone back now? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, that's good. So let's come back to the passes now, which is one of the most important aspects. I showed you some pictures to show you how they physically look like because we said bus is a collector and supplier of whatever quant physical quantity we are considering current or water flow or gas flow. But now we're coming to talk about those buses in a different manner. We are considering the electrical aspects of the buses of electric bus bars. So when you have your power system, we consider the whole system and people, the scientists, they specified the power systems, buses to four different types, considering what type of activities going on in those buses. The first one is called slack bus, swing bus or reference bus. It has three names. We must know all of them. And we have a problem if we know only slack bus and if we don't know that the slack bus is also called a swing bus, it's also called a reference bus. Because you might go to join a meeting or a discussion with your boss or uh, an engineer and they're talking about swing bus, swing bus, swing bus, and you are wondering what is that swing bus. You can't even understand. They will see it on the face of yours and they will say, okay, this guy doesn't know swing bus. That's how simple it is. So we know a slack bus is also called swing bus or reference bus because of some reason. The first thing about this bus is that 
we know two things for this bus. One is the voltage magnitude and the second is the angle of the voltage. And we normally put the voltage corresponding to that bus. Let's say if the bus is working at 33 kV, so it will be 33 kV. The magnitude and the angle is normally assumed to be zero degree because I remember that I was mentioning when we have reference in the phasor diagram, we choose the voltage to be reference. So that's why that angle is zero. And we normally assume it or set it to be zero. But when we're doing power flow studies, we normally normalize those voltages to per unit values. If you remember in last year, we were talking about per unit quantities, the advantages of using per unit quantities as compared to their actual values. So we're not talking about 33 kb. To us, 33 kb is the actual value and per unit value is the one per unit corresponding to that 33 kb. It will be one per unit for 11 kb for an 11 kb system. If we have 133 kb, 132 kb will represent one per unit as well. So we know the voltage magnitude and the phase angle for this slack bus, swing bus, or the reference bus. And real power and reactive power, we don't know. We have to find out for this bus. Two quantities are known or specified or assumed for this bus, voltage magnitude and the phase angle. Two quantities are unknown, active power and reactive power. And the most important thing about this slack bus or swing bus is that there can be only one slag bus or swing bus or reference bus in the power system for which you are doing the power flow study. There cannot be two slag buses or two reference buses in the power system for which you are doing the power flow study. Is that clear? Only one bus can be considered as a slag bus or swing bus or reference bus only one bus is that clear we'll remember that okay now the next thing about this slack bus is also important which is this slack bus is always numbered as bus number one if you remember when i was trying to explain on the general system diagram of the power system we draw the buses and then next thing immediately we number them bus one bus two bus three bus four bus five until we reach the bus n so when we're doing so we need to know which one is the slack bus it can be bus one it can be bus five so we need to know which bus is the slack bus and how do we know how do we choose that bus a bus should be a slack bus or a reference bus now, how do we know? It's simple. The bus which has the largest amount of generators or largest capacity of generation facility, meaning it should be the biggest generator bus where those generators can supply the amount of active power and reactive power demanded by the loads. So I have a generator bus, I have a bus, let's, let's say not generator bus, I have a bus where I have 500 megawatt active power and 200 megawatt reactive power, 500 megawatt and 200 megawatt reactive power. I have another bus in my power system which has 200 megawatt and 50 megawatt reactive power supplies facility. I have another bus where we have 750 megawatt and 350 megawatt reactive power facility. So out of these three buses, I should know that the slack bus will be the bus where 750 megawatt and 350 megawatt is connected. So the largest generation 
of active power and reactive power will give us the indication that that will be the slack bus it doesn't matter to which bus number it is connected but if i have to choose i'll choose that one as the slack bus and i will number it as the number one bus number one i will call it the bus number one so in most of the application you will see bus number one is the slack bus because that is where the largest generation capacity is connected but in some cases you might find that bus 9 is a slack bus or bus 3 is a slack bus but we will know that all this information that we have just talked about voltage magnitude the phase angle are known or given or specified or set by us and the phase angle is normally chosen as 0 degree and the voltage magnitude is chosen at the value of one power unit in the beginning of power flow calculation it will change later on depending on how much load is connected to which pass the second thing we will need to know that the ideal power and reactive power at the beginning of power flow study we don't know them to n variables unknown we will determine them or we'll know them after the completion of the power flow study the next thing is that slack bus is normally labeled as bus one and obviously it has the largest active power and reactive power supply capacity so that's the slack bus out of four different types of buses that we talk or that we use in our power flow study in power systems the next one is called pq bus and load bus again we have to remember both pq and load pq bus and load bus they are not different they have just different names we have to remember them PQ bus is such a bus where pure loads connected P and Q, meaning it's going to consume P and Q. So we will know P and Q of these buses. So that's why P and Q are known for these buses. So what are the things that are going to be unknown? The voltage magnitude and the phase angle for this bus. And if we look at what we just mentioned about the slack bus that only one bus can be a slack bus in a power system for which we are doing the power flow study if we look in the same way for the pq buses most of the buses are of pq bus or load bus 80 percent or more than 80 percent buses are load buses in our power systems is that clear It's 10 past 12. Should we stop? So you can go on if you want. We don't have a Okay, I have two more different types of buses. I can finish it in five, six minutes or maybe yeah, something like that. Let's finish this buses type. Thank you very much. So the next type is the PV bus. We call them generator bus as well. It's a PV bus. We call them generator bus as well. So what is happening with this PV bus, a generator is connected, which is a smaller capacity. Like I mentioned that I have 500 megawatt, 200 megawatt, 200 megawatt, 50 megawatt, 750, 350 megawatt. So 750, that one is a slack bus. The other one will be generator buses. The, both of them will work as or considered as the generator buses or PV buses. So those PV buses will have <coughs> reactive power and voltage magnitudes known we will know the reactive uh, sorry real power and the voltage magnitudes known uh, the other things meaning the reactive power and the voltage phase angles will be determined by the power flow study and in terms of numbers we see that it will be about 10 percent so we have a slack bus only one slack bus most of them are load buses like 80 percent and above and 10% of them will have smaller generation facilities supplying active power and reactive power. And the last one is called voltage controlled buses, meaning we need to control the voltage because those loads are consuming power, currents are flowing because current flow, because of current flow, there will be some voltage drops. So we need to compensate for those voltage drops, otherwise we will reach to a condition of voltage instability because we always have to remember that if there is no voltage current cannot flow if the current is not flowing there will be no power meaning the system is not there it's unstable in it reaches a condition of instability we cannot run that system anymore it will collapse on its own 
and that collapse is real collapse the whole grid will collapse actually in no time and it happened to many countries so those are the voltage control buses where we do some control we apply some equipment and some controls equipment on their own cannot do the task we need some control so the equipment that we use is called tap changing transformer we can step up the voltage or we also can step down the voltage if the voltage is too high we use synchronous condensers synchronous condenser nothing but synchronous machines like generators but they are only supplying the active power they are not supplying active power they are only synchronous generators if they are supplying only reactive power not active power then we call them synchronous condensers we run synchronous generators or synchronous machines to supply only reactive power to the system we also use something called static var compensator meaning it's compensating the reactive power hence bringing the voltage level of those respective buses to a value where the system is stable so we use different types of equipment depending on where it is depending on where how efficient it need to it needs to be depending on how much money we can spend on it and all those things so different types of applications are there together with control if you don't have control then you cannot again control the voltage and reactive power flow in those buses and cannot have a stable system at all so what will happen <coughs> real and reactive power generations meaning coming from the generator will be zero but we maintain them by these devices and p and q are known sorry voltage magnitudes p and q are known with the voltage magnitudes and we don't know the unknown uh, we don't know the voltage phase angles for these passes we determine them but these passes are very small in numbers where we do so but in our study we wouldn't use any voltage control bus we will use mainly the slack bus pq bus and the pv bus where the generators are connected but they are of smaller capacity as compared to the j bus where the largest amount of generation facilities are connected so thank you very much i will come to this next point which is one of the very important points that we talked about that slack bus reference bus or swing bus we have only one bus where the largest generation facility is connected why do we need that slack bus we'll come to that one next week thank you very much so you can relax now and enjoy the rest of the day but you did not ask any question that doesn't make me happy at all i need to have some questions <laughs> if you don't now don't have them now you can email me as well thank you very much for joining and keep oil thank you sir thanks